often woodworkers have a piece of furniture that they would like to replicate. A few photographs imported to SketchUp can enable this process, but it helps to know what pictures to take and are what positions and angles. I'll import a picture of a shaker rocker. I'll pick the side view and import as an image. When you import, the picture will tend to position on an axis of SketchUp based on the camera position. If you're looking down on the axes, the picture will flip to the red-green plane. I like my scanned pictures to come in on the red-blue, so I orbit down to force that position. Click the mouse and raise up to any size. I find that it is helpful if there are a straight on side, front and top photographs. But it can be even more helpful if the pictures are taken perpendicular to the major planes or faces in the, in the piece of furniture. Consider this shaker rocker. It has three major planes, the side that is oblique, the ladder back at an in angle or inclination, and the top of the seat or top of the arms also at an angle. The best pictures are ones taken perpendicular to these three planes. When I'm working with scanned images, I like to have the camera set at parallel projection and use the front view. This photograph is not exactly square with the SketchUp axes, so I'll adjust the angle using the edge of the wall for reference. The next step is to make this photograph full size. I'll pick the tape measure and hit the control or option key on the Mac and check the length of the back leg. I've measured this leg and I know it's 44 inches and I'm a little bit bigger than that in the picture. So I click the mouse and it asks me if I want to resize the model and yes I do. You can see that this picture is taken perpendicular to the splay of the side of the chair. So this means I can get a good traceover of the parts in this side view on this plane or face. I just draw that in temporarily. I'll delete it out. Now I'll bring in the front view of the picture. I've actually tried to angle the camera to be perpendicular to the face of the ladder back that slants backward. I can use the side view picture to help size the, the front view picture. The bottom of the back leg is located here. I'll draw a line on the red axis for reference. I can see that I need to move the picture down to match up the position of the bottom of the back leg to this picture. Okay. The top of the leg, the back leg, is at this position up here. So I can see I need to scale up the front view to line up at correct size. Using the scale tool, I'll increase the size. That looks pretty good, but I need to bring this down here a little bit to match up with the bottom. I can see that this picture is not quite 
lined up again north-south. So I'm going to nudge this nudge this in rotation and I'm going to nudge this at about a degree, one degree, that should do it. That looks better. This view gives me a good palette to trace over the ladder back shape as I'm illustrating here. This is the back plane that I can now use as a, to trace over these shapes. The last picture we need is a top view to get a good picture of the or a good shape of the arms, the chair arms. I know the dimension from center to center of the arms And I'm using the tape measure tool to measure that distance center to center. And I, that's slightly bigger than what I know it is. And I'm going to use the scale tool. So I'll ratio the distance I just measured to what it should be. And then use the scale tool and bring it down to the uh, ratio of those two dimensions. There it is. These three images then give me an excellent palette for sizing up and shaping all the chair's components.